Hello and welcome to the channel everybody and today I'm going to be doing a beginner's guide for FS Economy. Now what is FS Economy? Well it's a multiplayer persistent world add-on for flight simulators uh, with an economical focus. So what it is, it's, it's a really fun way to add immersion and meaning to the flights that you conduct. Uh, so what you do is you fly from one airport to another carrying cargo and passengers. You earn virtual dollars for completing those flights and you can use those, use those virtual dollars to purchase airplanes. You can even set up your own fixed base operation and control passenger terminals. So there's a bunch of different things you can do within FS Economy and today in this video I'm going to show you how to set up an account and how to go from starting an FS economy through to completing your first flight. So it's going to be a relatively basic uh, tutorial, uh, but if you do enjoy it, please smash a like button down below, and if you would like me to, let me know in the comments and I can complete a more in-depth tutorial that goes into some of the other aspects of FS economy. So with that said everybody, let's get into it. Okay, the first thing you need to do everybody is register an account and uh, what you do need to know is there's actually two sites to FS Economy. You've got the community site and that's where we're going to go to first and then you've got the game world site. And the game world site's got uh, all the places you go and book aircraft and uh, choose jobs and all that sort of stuff. So what you need to do is go to this URL up the top here. Uh, I've put the link down in the description so click on that and you'll get to this page here. Uh, and fill out your details and you'll then uh, receive a, an account uh, for the communities part of the site. Now pay a particular attention to this bit over on the right hand side. It gives you the basic instructions to get set up. So it talks about that you'll register for this account here. Then you log into the forum and in the game world account section of the forum you request a game world account. Uh, and that's what's going to get access to uh, everything uh, that you need to be able to conduct flights. Now just be aware that of course Microsoft Flight Simulator 2020 was released just a few days ago and there's been a huge increase in interest in FS Economy. So uh, they are a bunch of volunteers who run the site so please be patient. It might take a little while for your Game World account to, uh, to be approved and set up. So just be aware of that. Uh, so while you've got maybe a few days to um, while you're waiting, what I'd highly recommend is that you go across here to the user guide link and have a good look through this. So I've actually got the tab up here. This is the uh, the user guide. Now I know how much uh, people love reading through manuals, not, but this one is really fantastic. It's going to step you through how to set up and conduct your first flight, right through to some quite involved and detailed stuff that you'll get into later on once you uh, start earning a few virtual dollars. So I'd highly recommend going through this. Uh, it's going to answer every question that you have, and if you do have any other questions, you've got the forum also that you can um, you know, ask your questions there, and people will be more than happy to help you. Okay, once you've got a Game World account set up, uh, you need to log in to uh, the site. Here goes the details up there. Uh, you'll get all the details once you get your account. Uh, on the top right-hand corner, you'll uh, see your username, and it'll show you what your current cash balance and bank balance is. Uh, and uh, at the moment obviously you'll have zero in both those columns because you won't have done a flight yet uh, but over time you can either have cash on hand or you can put it in your bank and, and earn a little bit of interest uh, each month but we're not going to go into that sort of detail today I'm just going to show you how to set up your first flight just the very basics and uh, if you do want me to do some more in-depth tutorials let me know down in the comments and I'm more than happy to step through some of the more advanced stuff so the first thing you need to do is go and find some jobs. Now you don't have an aircraft, you don't own an aircraft, so you're going to have to do two things. Number one, find some jobs, and number two, find an aircraft to rent so you can fly the jobs. Now the interesting thing about uh, this site is that you're not necessarily going to have the kind of aircraft that you want to fly at the airports that the jobs are at. So you've got to do a bit of searching, and um, that's really the advantage in the future when you do own your own aircraft and perhaps even own your own FBO uh, you can number one ensure you always have an aircraft and number two if you do own an FBO uh, you have control over the passenger terminals and can create jobs yourself so you can uh, you can send jobs to wherever you like so uh, that's sort of the advantage that once you earn a few dollars you, you have a lot more control over the types of flights that you do but in the meantime how about we just go ahead and try to find uh, some jobs so go up to airports 
and we are in here in the search airports part of the site. Uh, so what we want to do is uh, to make our life easier, rather than just search for random airports, let's search for airports that are going to have the type of aircraft that we want to fly. Now at the moment, Microsoft Flight Simulator 2020 doesn't have a huge range of, air, of aircraft. Uh, obviously as time goes by and more gets added, there will be more options, but you need to know that the aircraft that you fly in the sim needs to exactly match the type of aircraft that you rent in the FS Economy site. So let's go with the good old Cessna 172 because there's heaps of those around and it should be easy to find, uh, to find uh, some jobs and find an aircraft. So we go down to Cessna 172, right here, uh, Cessna 172, we got the other end. And you want to click rentable because you want the search to only show you airports that you actually are able to rent aircraft in. Because some owners of aircraft, they don't rent them out, they just keep them for their own use. So you don't want to see those ones. So let's filter it down even further because if I click go now, that's going to show me every single Cessna 172 that's available to be rented in the entire site. Uh, and I don't want that. I, I just want to see in New Zealand basically for, because that's where I want to fly. So I'll say just show me airports that are within, within a thousand nautical miles of NZWN, which is right in the middle of New Zealand. So I pretty much am going to search the entire um, country of New Zealand. So. What I'm saying here is show me um, all airports that have a Cessna 172 that I can rent but are within a thousand nautical miles from Wellington. I go go and there we go. I'm presented with four results. So what you want to do is you can just click on these and then go and have a look in the airport, check that they've got jobs, rent the aircraft and away you go. That's the short story but let me just step you through it because there's a couple of things you just want to check. Uh, so what I generally do is, here we go, Hamilton, I'll right click on Hamilton and go enter, um, open a new tab, and that way if it doesn't have what I want, I can quickly go back into the search and grab the one I do. So if I open up Hamilton right here, the first thing I always do is sort the jobs by nautical miles. So I just click on that, and uh, and that makes it uh, nice and easy to see the distance of the jobs, because I don't want to fly for hundreds of nautical miles, particularly if I have an aircraft that can't do it. I'm not going to go through all the details on the uh, on the airport uh, page, but let me take you through just the main ones. Here goes the jobs that are available um, right here. Uh, how much you are going to get paid for each of the jobs. Um, and uh, out of the pay that you get, you will have to pay for, for fuel if you rent the aircraft without fuel. You will have to pay for landing fees, ground crew fees, stuff like that. So there are a few fees that you do have to pay but it tells you where, the, where it's departing from, where, where the arrival airport is, uh, the length of the flight, the bearing, the type of cargo, and it's either going to be passenger or it's going to be actual you know, kilograms of cargo. Now, you'll see that some are green and some are black. Don't worry too much about that at the moment, except that choose green if you can. Green are user-generated jobs. So these are people who own the FPO, have saved up enough money and own an FPO, therefore they they control the, the, the passenger, passenger terminals and can actually create jobs. So go for the green ones, the better paying ones. Uh, then over the right hand, just a little bit of extra information, including uh, when the jobs expire. So first thing I'd do is um, just check that there's some jobs available. And right here, I know off the top of my head that a Cessna 172 carries three passengers. So this would be quite nice. We've got three passengers right here that I can click. One, two, three, select those. And uh, then I just scroll down here and go add selected assignments to my flight. So I'll click that right now. And those jobs have now disappeared off the job board and they'll be available to view up in my flight. We won't go there quite yet because what we need to do is rent our aircraft. Now you can do this in any order. You sort of check between the two to make sure that the aircraft uh, is available as uh, advertised. It doesn't have one of these little green things, uh, sort of green thing with a screwdriver and the spanner. That means that it needs to be repaired before you can fly it. And often, um, renters can't repair aircraft, only the aircraft owner can. So that's just something to be aware of. But the Cessna 172 is available right here. There goes its registration number. Uh, the type of equipment, some don't have autopilots or GPS, so just check that out. Uh, it shows its home base. Uh, and then it shows how much the rental price is. Uh, you'll see up the top here that some have a dry cost and some have a wet cost. Dry cost basically means you rent, that's how much you're gonna pay per hour, and then you pay for only the fuel that you use during the time that you're in the air, or the time that, of your total flight, I should say. The second number is 600, which is wet, 
Uh, and that means oh, the fuel's all included. So no matter how much fuel you use, it will be $600 an hour flat rate. For this Cessna, it doesn't give us a wet uh, option. It just says if you want to rent this, it's going to cost you $100 per hour. And we're going to go, OK, so we just click on Rent Dry. So there we go. We've now rented an aircraft and we've selected our passenger jobs. So what you want to do is go up to My Flight right here and uh, it gives you a summary of all the jobs that you've got sitting in your little holding or loading area um, in any aircraft that you've rented and you can only rent one aircraft at a time so a couple things you want to check is make sure you've got enough fuel in there now this is only a 44 nautical mile flight very small and i've got 48 percent um, uh, of uh, my fuel capacity in there so it's more than enough to get there what you do want to check though, and we'll just quickly right click on uh, NZTH, you want to make sure it's got fuel available. I've gone into NZTH uh, and here it goes here, 100 LL and JEDA, there it goes. It shows that there's definitely gallons available there. The last thing you want to do is fly to a destination, need to refuel and it doesn't have any fuel. Uh, if The easy way to find out if it's even got a fuel, fuel tank, so you see the little F, uh, it's very hard to see above the blue dot here. Uh, that that shows you uh, whether it's got fuel or not. And then when you go into the actual airport, it shows you how much. It's got heaps. So I'm not going to be stranded. If I get there and I need to refuel, I'm going to have fuel to fly, uh, to, to, to refuel with, I should say. Now, ignore this bit that says fly for Ard Air. Um, if you join a group, and you're more than welcome to join my Ard Air group if you want. It's a very small sort of virtual group sort of thing. Um, but if you click on that, then part of the money that you earn will go to the group, and the group might have a whole lot of aircraft that you can use at no rental cost to you. So uh, there's a few advantages with going into a group. Um, but in the meantime, just you can just do it yourself, and there's no problem at all. So one other thing just to be aware of is just understand the capacity of your aircraft, and it gives you a summary right here. The key thing here is passenger count for next flight is three. Um, and there's no seats available because if we click on the registration down below here of the aircraft it brings up the aircraft details and the key one is right here this shows you what the capacity of the aircraft is so it can either take um, we know that it's 48 percent so it's essentially 50 percent of fuel it can take three passengers or it could take 282 kilos which is 622 pound, uh, pounds of cargo now as you can see if we were 100 percent full of fuel so fully fueled up because of the extra weight, we could only take two passengers or 210 kilos of uh, cargo. What you do need to know is you can take a combination of uh, cargo and passengers. It's completely up to you, as long as it doesn't exceed the overall weight that the aircraft can actually carry. And the best way to check that is in your, uh, in your uh, what's it called, the My Flight page. So we can see here that it says, here goes the weight is 308 kilo. And we still have 54 kilo remains available at the current fuel load. So if there was a few little sort of boxes or couriers that needed to go to this airport too, um, you know, I could load those in and uh, take those with me on the flight. So with all that said, everybody, um, you are now good to uh, go ahead and... Um, and complete your flight. Now what I would say here is you need to have the FEC client uh, installed. Uh, it's a little program that runs uh, alongside Microsoft Flight Simulator and I've actually done a separate video on this and I'll put the link down in the description and that's going to talk you through how to set that up. You need to have that set up before you can do flights. Uh, it's really straightforward by the way, really easy to install. So what I'll do is how about we go and jump into the uh, simulator and I'll just show you how to set up a flight, uh, start the client, and then I'll quickly fly the fly offline, and then I'll come back in and show you what what the uh, summary will look like once you're flown, flowing your flight. So I'll catch you very soon. Okay, here we are in the cockpit uh, with the engine all started up, ready to go. So I'll just grab my uh, uh, FS Economy client right here, and you can see it in front of me here, and the the pieces of information that you're looking for right here are the two greens down below connected to the flight simulator, connected to the uh, FS Economy service, so that's all good. I've got the correct aircraft, Cessna 172, and it's available here in Hamilton. Uh, so I am all good to go. So what I want to do is we go to action, um, and what you want to do is just press start flight. Now you do have to have your parking brake on. 
uh, when uh, you start the flight. And then when you go and land at your destination airport, uh, you pull up to the parking. You, as soon as you put your parking brake on, it will process the flight and send the information back to you. Uh, the website so let's start this flight there we go uh, and if you go to the flight tab it will show you everything starting to run it will show you how much your rental is going to cost your and how much fuel so far that sort of stuff uh, and what you have got on board in terms of passengers and or cargo so what I'll do I'll taxi out I'll go and do the flight uh, we'll land in Thames and then let's do a bit of a debrief and see what the log looks like after we've completed. So I'll catch you really soon. Okay, just one more thing. As I taxi out to the runway, everybody, and these graphics are looking really, really good, uh, is I went ahead and tried to change my CDI to GPS so I could follow the GPS. And you watch what happens. I get this little message up here saying this aircraft does not have an integrated GPS. Now it's really important that you take a look at the equipment that's installed on the aircraft page in FS Economy because not all aircraft have every piece of equipment installed. Some don't have autopilots, some don't have GPS, some you can't fly in IFR conditions. So in this case here, I'm, I don't have my GPS enabled which means I can't set uh, follow the GPS. Uh, I'm going to have to uh, sort of point the aircraft in the right direction. It does have autopilot, so I can control my altitude and uh, my heading and all that. But I just can't use my GPS under in the normal way that I would uh, usually. Because technically, although we can see the GPS here in the aircraft modelled, um, uh, FSC economy is uh, sorry, FS economy is stopping me from using it because this aircraft doesn't actually have it installed. So it's kind of a cool little add-on. Uh, a little bit more realism um, and immersion in your flight. So anyway, I'll get this flight done. We'll catch up soon. Okay, we've come back and uh, landed safely here in Thames. So I'll just pull up the aircraft over here. Now I'll put on my parking brake. And as you can see, it's saying send your results to the server. And there you go. Your flight has been logged. So I'll press OK. And I'll meet you back at the website and we can take a look at the results of our flight. Okay, here we are back on the FS Economy uh, website. So we just go to Logs and just click on that. And it's going to list all the flights that, you have been, that you've completed. And you can see uh, I've done quite a few here, but the latest one here was Hamilton to Thames. So you click on View. And it brings up a summary of your flight. So we can see that the three passengers that we carried, that was an, uh, an income of 2013 virtual dollars. Uh, the rental cost us uh, $100, so it was uh, 32 minutes of flight right there. Um, sorry, it's $100 per hour, and at 32 minutes mean that we only had to pay $54. Get that right. Uh, fuel cost us $22 for the flight. We had a ground crew fee of $201, and I'll go into that in future videos uh, in more detail around how that's calculated. So the total cost of the flight was 223 plus 54, you take that off our income, and we're left with $1,735, and that goes up into our bank account, and there you go, that's how you complete your first flight in FS Economy. So I hope you found that helpful. Um, like I said, if you'd like me to do more advanced tutorials on different parts of uh, FS Economy, then let me know down in the comments. Uh, but apart from that, if you're new, uh, please uh, consider subscribing to the channel. Uh, smash the like button uh, also if you did enjoy this tutorial. And until next time, everybody, take it easy.